So I'd like to talk to you about the endomembrane system. So recall that inside the cell, we have the nucleus. And inside that nucleus, we have the DNA along with the nucleolus. Of course, this is in eukaryotic organisms. The nucleus is going to be surrounded by this double membrane layer called the nuclear envelope. And the nuclear envelope is going to feed directly into an organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum. So we have our nucleus here. We have our endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, here. And remember that there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. There is what is known as rough, and it's called rough because on the surface of the ER you're going to have these ribosomes. So here's our rough ER. And then up here at the top, we have ER with no ribosomes, and that's going to be called the smooth ER. And these two structures have different functions. So remember that you're going to want to know the difference between the smooth ER and the rough ER in terms of their relative function. Now, the rough ER is going to be involved in the endomembrane system. Smooth ER, not technically. So let's start the nucleus, where we are going to take a piece of DNA, and we're going to transcribe it into RNA. That RNA is going to leave through one of the pores in the nucleus, and then it's going to be bound by a ribosome so that it can be translated into a protein. Now that ribosome, assuming this is a protein that's going to be passed through the endomembrane system, that ribosome is going to bind to the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. So we're going to have our RNA stemming off of that ribosome, and the ribosome will be located at the ER. As it translates it, that ribosome is eventually going to generate some form of polypeptide inside the ER. Okay. I'm going to draw three different types here in just a moment. So we've got this polypeptide that's going to have certain carbohydrates on it, but it's not a fully functional polypeptide at this point. So this is a polypeptide we're going to pass through the endomembrane system. And we're going to have three different types of potential polypeptides that are going to enter this structure here. It is, of course, known as a transport vesicle. This is a vesicle. It's going to be passed to the next member of the endomembrane system. And the three types of proteins we have here, proteins that look like this, proteins that look like this, and then a protein that I will draw like that. Okay, so we've got these three different polypeptides inside of this vesicle. And those polypeptides are going to be carried to the next organelle utilized in this system, known as the Golgi. Okay, so this is the Golgi apparatus. Remember, it has two faces, a cis face and a trans face. Okay, so it's nucleus. We're now in the cytoplasm here with the ER and the Golgi apparatus, and our vesicle is now approaching the Golgi. So a bunch of these vesicles are going to fuse and become the new cis face. And those polypeptides that were inside are going to exist in the cis face. And then remember that the cis face is going to move until it becomes eventually the trans space. It's going to merge and there are going to be enzymes here that modify these polypeptides, making them active. We call this movement of the cis space from left to right until it becomes trans, cis maturation. So it's going to go from starting as the initial cis space, and eventually this is going to become the trans space. So I'm going to draw these polypeptides, but understand what's really happening here is this space is moving, and as it is, the enzymes inside the Golgi are modifying these and labeling them for where they need to go for transport. We finally wind up with our modified polypeptides 
And we're ready to finally ship those out to wherever they're going to be used, inside or outside of the cell. So the final component of the endomembrane system, of course, here is the plasma membrane. And everything outside of this plasma membrane represents the exterior of the cell. Okay. So we're again going to have another vesicle pinch off. Okay. And let's assume that these three proteins have different fates. So we're going to have the three distinct fates that could await these potential proteins. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with this guy here. So in this particular instance, this membrane of the vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane, and this polypeptide is released, and we call that secretion. So the first potential fate of a protein that moves through the endomembrane system is secretion to the outside of the cell. In the second instance, we're going to take this guy here. That vesicle with that protein is going to fuse with the plasma membrane just like the one did for secretion. And that membrane is going to be integrated, I'm sorry, that protein is going to be integrated into the membrane. So the second potential fate is integration, okay, where we get a transmembrane protein in the membrane of the cell. And the final Potential fate is where the protein is a hydrolytic enzyme, in which case it winds up inside the lysosome, which is the digestive body of the cell. And it's going to be used to break down foreign pathogens as well as food particles. Okay? So this is the endomembrane system from start to finish. We start in the nucleus of the cell. With the DNA, okay, we make RNA off of that DNA. That RNA is translated into protein or polypeptides in the ER, specifically the rough ER. It's transported via vesicles to the Golgi, where it is modified to functional polypeptide. Then it is transported out of the Golgi in vesicles, where it undergoes one of three different fates. So this is the endomembrane system from start to finish.